with the Sand Ninja's tower defeated, but Oni nowhere in sight. With the head ninja out of commission, Ryoshi questioned the other captive that they had taken from the Sand Ninja, Sting. Ryoshi had dozens of questions to ask him, but when he woke, the first one that came to mind, where is Oni? Sting smiled, a broken toothed grin. You're a bit late for her, he said. His eyes went downcast for a minute. The fake grin fell for a moment. She's just over there. Ryoshi followed his gaze until he came across a hastily built gravesite. There was no headstone, no indication of who was buried there. Ryoshi went back to Sting. What does this mean? Stop talking in riddles. Sting sighed. She's already dead, mate. Happened a few weeks back. I didn't see it happen, but her head was taken clean off. Ryoshi refused to believe it. Well, who's in charge then? Belf's in charge. Only been in for a few weeks. Got any more questions? Best ask her. After they finished looting the tower, the team slowly made their way back across the skim sands, using darkness to cover their tracks as much as possible. When they eventually got back to base, they rested up and awaited Belf's recovery. As the sun started to rise on another day, Ryoshi and his team considered what to do with the prisoners that they had secured from the Sand Ninja. The two prisoners that they had captured, Belf and Sting, were criminals. They needed to be brought to justice. Ryoshi felt deflated upon learning that Oni had already perished. His whole mission until this point was to find the Sand Ninja and bring them to justice. It seemed like this had already been done for him. The Sand Ninja in disarray, a new leader, their old leader, buried haphazardly in front of their base. Ryoshi put it to the team that this Belf and Sting were criminals, and according to the law of this land and the one that Ryoshi followed, they should be sent to work in the slave mines to pay off their debt to society. Mew was vocal about the fact that she hated this idea. She said that being a slave was the worst possible punishment. It was dehumanizing and overly cruel. Green also stepped forward, agreeing with Mew. Sending them straight to the slave farms was unnecessary, and that Ryoshi should think twice about sending those criminals there, even if he saw it as justified. Ryoshi decided, therefore, he would take them to the police and heft instead. The United Cities could determine what to do with the prisoners. He needed to question Belf, find out what actually happened to Oni, and why the Sand Ninja did what they did against his family. Hello my fellow Spuds and welcome back to another episode of Kenshi. Last episode we went and raided the Sand Ninja's main base and we didn't find Oni. Instead we found a grave that this person Sting said belonged to Oni. Since he gave us this description we've had this other character Belf wake up. Now she is supposedly from the bounty on her head, the leader of the Sand Ninja. So not quite sure what happened there, but whatever the case, we need to question her. Our base is not suitable for that. We don't have any cages, we don't have any prisoner poles set up. So we need to really take them to somewhere where they can face retribution and also where we can question them properly. And it just so happens that the United Cities is perfect for that. So I think we should take them to Heft. So. We're going to take Ryoshi and Leon across to Heft, it's not that far, and uh, Ryoshi can try and get some form of closure as to the death of his family. The rest of us, we've kind of filled our main objective, we have taken on the Sand Ninja. So, I think it'll be quite nice to settle down a little bit, let's see if we can get some more research done, we'll see if we can get any more books, we'll see if we can get any more trade goods maybe? Oh, um, I forgot we've got all this stout and stuff that's on Fleabag. Uh, yeah, we desperately need to sell all this. So I think we should probably do that in a second. Fluffy, from what I've been told, isn't a bone dog. Fluffy is a bone mutt, which apparently is very different. There's only a couple in the world. So we would have to look out to see if we can find any backpacks for bone mutts in particular, which I'm not sure if we can do, but it would be nice to get Fluffy a backpack. On the subject of good ideas, Cyberbeep. You're only five strength. I was wondering whether you would be able to go into Deadlands, see if we can go to the Skeleton City. I'm sure you would know where the Skeleton City is, or you have lived here pretty much all your life, presumably, and you're next door to it. So out of everyone, you and Leon are probably the only people who would know. The problem is you're just god awful. <laughs> and I need you to take everything that's on Fleabag, really, but I don't think you're going to be able to do that, are you? And we'll have a look at the tech. So I have put some tech forward. So we've got uh, tech level three is being researched currently. We've got mountain crossbows, makeshift walls, defense walls, everything ready so that we can build a base 
as and when we are ready. Building a base, we are a little way off that. It's really mid to late game because we do not want to be constantly raided and attacked and pillaged by raiders and our enemies. So we're probably going to leave that for a little bit until we've got all the research done and we are strong enough and prepared enough that we could take on enemies. Really, the minimum is that we need to have probably tech level five, have harpoons, maybe have hydroponics and a few other bits. I think indoor wells would be quite good. So I'm going to do that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a play around with it, see what we can do. But I would like to do a prop assessment in the future. But for now, I think something like this, where we can have both this and this is probably the best we should do. Yeah, I think we have to play it safe for a bit. Get some more characters. We'll have to level up our peoples. And yeah, and then we can go from there. Green, I need you to come here then. I would like you to go to the Black Desert City. You can run 20 with all of that. That's acceptable. How fast can Cybeat run? Cybeat can only run 16 miles an hour. It would be good practice for you though. You can only run 13. What? Because the armor you're wearing. <laughs> so you can't even carry the armor. You've barely got anything on. Let's get rid of that. How heavy is it? Two kilograms. Fine, get rid of that. How? F you can run 16 now. Good. You can wear that though. That's fine. Uh, and you can wear ninja rags. Good. And I will get you to wear... There you go, that. Cool. So you should now still be able to run 16. Yeah, that's fine. Go have a bonding session with Green. Cyberbeep looks a... He's tiny. <laughs> tiny compared to Green. Uh, you two. I'm going to get you to go to the Black Desert City. I need Cyberbeep to level up his athletics, so I think that's pretty good. And Green can always pick Cyberbeep up in a pinch, which is nice. And you can both just go have a nice time. I'm really hoping that you will actually level athletics fairly quickly. I think Cyberbeep's just going to guide Green as to where to go, because I don't really want Green to go on his own. Right, and we join Leon and Ryoshi still travelling across to Heng. They're just on the city limits. You can just see off in the distance. We need to get to there, then we need to question them. That's the plan. Keep going. Oh, here we go. Discovered Scrap House. Discovered Black Desert City. There we go. It's just there. It's just a hop, skip and a jump away. That's fine. Uh, Cyberbeep, how are you doing? You still can only run 16, but you are level 4 athletics now. Cool. Well... Yeah, it won't be long. Oh god, that was terrifying. 16 is not fast enough. You need to be running like at least 20 to uh, escape most things. But 18 would be acceptable. I can see the scrap house in the distance. We are kind of aiming for there. What is... Oh. Do hivers have natural acid protection and I'm an idiot? <laughs> oh, after all of that. Of course they do. Well, whatever. Just get, just get to the city. I was really worried about that and they're absolutely fine. Uh, just, just get the city. <laughs> Is that the San Ninja Oni? No. No, it's not. Over here, I don't have all day, Hunter. Well, you're not interested. It's not Oni. It's Belf. It is not Oni. I was confused as well. Right, let's go hand in the bounty to uh, the Empire Barracks. They can decide what to do with them. But when they're in the cages, we're going to give them a good questioning and figure out what's going on. Very nice, you brought in this from the Spine Canyon. I'm sure a pain in the ass. It's a woman, isn't it? Yeah. Tengu will be very pleased. Good job, Hunter. I take you have brought him in here for a reward? No, I just wanted to show you how it was done. No, take him. There we go. Sand Ninja decreased by 100. Yep, well, obviously. 20,000 cat reward. Good. There we go, on the prisoner pole. Nice. And uh, Leon, you do the same. Get the bounty. And then we can do our little chat with them. It looks like you've caught a bounty. Want a reward, I suppose? Oh, we get 200c bonus. I don't understand why we get a bonus, but apparently we do. Okay, cool. So, anyway, we've already talked to Sting. We don't really care too much about Sting. What we care about is this person, Belf. Ryoshi stood there, staring at the leader of the Sand Ninja, the group that until yesterday had been his mortal enemy. Ryoshi had so many questions that he wanted answering. But to start off with, he just looked at Belf. Her eyes were downcast. She looked defeated, in every sense of the term. She had nothing left. She knew what was to become of her, and she was clearly questioning every choice she had made until this point. Ryoshi started with the obvious. He asked about Oni, and what happened to her. Belf sighed, and started to tell the story of what happened to Oni, and what led to the Sand Ninja being in such disarray. She said it all started about a month ago. Oni had made some sort of contract to do with trade goods and weapons from some rich noble somewhere. Belf didn't really know the details, but knew that the contract made Oni very much on edge. But after they didn't get the shipment, Oni gave the order to raid this noble's home and destroy everything, kill everyone. 
This was out of the norm for them. They had to travel a great distance to go and do this, as it wasn't in the Great Desert. Even still, they did it, but Belf was always uncertain about why they were doing it. Sure, there were cats involved, but it was no great amount. 50,000 cats worth. They could probably take the hit and make the money back after a few months. Even still, it seemed a strange thing to do, to march halfway across the world, to take retribution against someone that couldn't possibly pay back the money they owed. Belf had questioned Oni about this, and Oni had only given vague answers, saying there was much more at stake than just a simple contract with a noble. That was the last Belf heard about it, until a few weeks ago. They came in the middle of the night, completely unexpected, completely overwhelmed the Sand Ninja, and in the chaos of the battle, they took Oni's head. Many lost their lives that day, and many were injured. But, this group left as quickly as they came. They came with one clear goal, to kill Oni. They looted nothing, not their money, not their armor, not their weapons, not their goods. As soon as Oni was dead, they left. However, as Belf, injured lying on the floor, struggled to stay awake due to blood loss, she did hear one of the lackeys let something slip. That's what you get for going against the bastards. That was the last thing she heard before she passed out. She had never been sure if this was actually what happened, or whether this was a hallucination caused by blood loss. Whatever the case, she'd heard of the bastards as a group, somewhere up north in Bast, but they as a group had never had any dealings with them. They knew they were trouble, but that was it. Delph didn't know any more. She didn't know what Oni had done to deserve being slaughtered. She didn't know what else went along with that noble's contract, but clearly it went deeper than just a 50,000 cat debt. Oni didn't know what to say. It was clear that the Sand Ninja weren't the end of his journey. The revenge of his family wasn't complete. It was clear their next target was the Bastards. Ryoshi had never heard of them as a group, but he had all he needed to go by. Maybe now, Ryoshi would finally be able to get revenge. Finally be able to get answers, and find out why exactly his father's contract was more than it seemed. Right, so Ryoshi and Leon have got some answers from Belf. So, apparently, our now main enemy is in Bast, the Bastards. We need to go and investigate at some point soon. Bast is an interesting place, it's a bit far out of the way compared to what we have explored previously, but I think it is worth doing soon. I think, really, we should probably train up a little bit more, we should probably get ourselves a bit more settled before we attempt to go there, but we could always send Green or Ryoshi could go on his own just to do some investigating beforehand. I think that's probably a good idea. For now, let's quickly check on Cyberbeep and Green. Right, they're in the Deadlands, and it looks like there's a fight going on. What are you fighting? Oh, there's an old machine. Right, get there. We're going to see if uh, we can loot that old machine, wherever it is. Well, we got a broken research core. That's nice. And we can take them. That'll do. Where do we go? Uh, we need to find somewhere to trade. Oh, bar. Excellent. Right. This is a very empty bar. I was expecting more, to be honest. Sorry, we don't sell human food. I hope you bought your own. Need anything else? Show me what you got. Okay. 50% markup. 50... Hang on. Oh! <laughs> How much? You 25 We've already bought him out. Oh, we can buy all of them. Random metal furniture. Sure, we'll buy that. Let's buy the engineer ones. So he's now got 28. Sell those two. Get our money back. 50,000 cats, and we've still got a ton of it. Ton of ale. I mean, how much is that worth here? Maybe 80,000 at a push? Very, very nice. Let's do that. And then rusted bridge. Rusted ruin. I've got no idea what that's about. And do we have any more recruits in here? Short circuit. Buzz. What is it? Buzz. Huh? Buzz. What is it, you scrap of metal? Oh, gotcha. I take it you're looking for a way out of town? Buzz. Join on up then. Oh. Uh, we've, we've got a new recruit. <laughs> uh, short circuit. Oh, you're pretty good. Pretty good strength. Fairly alright toughness. Uh, your martial arts isn't bad. 18. Robotics is good. Okay, you're not a bad recruit, just from... I mean, 10,000 cats is quite a lot, but presumably you're a unique recruit, judging from the way you're talking, so that's not bad. And we do need some more skeletons to join our group, which is quite nice. Can we then get Green to talk to anyone else? Like, who are you? Horse. Best not be looking at me, Chombo, or I'll... I'll... Best not. I'm looking at you. I'm also looking to hire you. What do you think? What? Really? I'm gonna tell my... I mean, of course you are, but I ain't free. Chumps are free. Not me. 3,000 large, that's my offer. Done. Fall in, killer. 
Right, we've got a new character, horse. I think we should just recruit as many skeletons as possible, because if we're going to set up a little trading outpost or a little village, uh, I think skeletons are great because we can just leave them be. So we'll just recruit as many as we possibly can here, and we'll go from there. Red Rick. Hello, visitor. What can I do for an old friend? Friend? I don't remember ever meeting you. All skeletons are brother in mind. That's my opinion. But green's not a skeleton. Okay, friend. Are you with me? Oh, what? <laughs> okay, that was bizarre. We've just got a new recruit, uh, Red Rick. Uh, you're pretty pants. Uh, you're not bad melee attack. Not bad with blunt and hackers. Apart from that, you're pretty mediocre. Horse, oh, god awful. Everything about you is awful. <laughs> okay, I think you're just going to be a laborer, or maybe I'll get you to be weaponsmith or something. This is This is quite good. We're getting a lot of good recruits here, though. Kink? Oi, heading out of town, looking to band together? Yeah, want to join up? 3,000 cats. Sure. All right, I owe you. Kenk. I mean, what are you good at? Nothing again. Excellent. Nutto. <laughs> are you looking for recruits? 3,000. Sure, join us. Brilliant. Nutto. That's an amazing name. Uh, is there anyone else that we could talk to, maybe? What about this one? Can I help you, Outlander? I want to trade. Oh. Um, skeleton outpost type. 35,000. What? And it's blue and needs level 7. Uh, and you sell half eaten books and broken AI cores. Looking for an AI core construction guide. The guide costs 48,000. So that's how you make AI cores. Ah, I got you, I got you, I got you. I can't afford that. You've got money. We could trade that. Okay, that's interesting. So we could potentially buy an AI kit that allows us to make. AIs are broken AI cores, presumably. That's cool. Glue. You want to join my squad? I barely even know you. Why would I join up with you? Okay, so maybe we're not going to get any more people. I mean, we've got quite a few, to be fair, already. This is more than I was expecting, which is pretty cool. Hello there. Name's Green. Nice to meet you. I'd like you to come and work for me. I don't make a habit. Maybe once you're well-known. No. Okay, fine. So we're not very well-known, so we're not going to get many recruits here. But... That's a good extra five people that we've just recruited. So I can't really complain too much. Right now then, I think we should go try and find somewhere else to trade some more goods. So I think in here, which is a prosthetic space, we can go and trade some lager in there, hopefully. And yeah, now I need to get Ryoshi back home after that. A human. Not every day I get a human customer. But sure, I've got plenty of parts, should fit you fine indeed. Did you travel all the way here just for my expertise? Gosh, I'm... I'm flattered. <laughs> I don't blame you though, human. Flesh is good for nothing but rotting. Where was I going with this? Right, that was it. Guess you're looking to buy some parts, or maybe you're looking for some repairs? I can fix anything, trust me. Years of experience. Everyone thinks they're a robotics expert these days, but they've got nothing on the robotics capital of the land, believe you me. You are right to pilgrimage hundreds of miles just to seek me out. I really am good at this stuff. Where was I going with this? <laughs> Show me what you've got. Oh my god, okay, you've got a ton of stuff. Um, we we don't need any limbs, do we? I'm pretty sure everyone has their original limbs. But, yeah, you've still got 50% markup for that. Really, only six. Oh, that's exactly enough. There we go. <laughs> uh, masterwork, stealth legs. I mean, this is all incredible. I mean, when we lose limbs, this is going to be amazing. But for now, I don't think we need any of that. Uh, the next place we need to go, which is the last place we can sell anything here, is the scrap house. So everyone, make your way over to the scrap house, please. Now, we've got Ryoshi and Leon. I need you to run back, please, to ooh, wherever Adnok is. There we go. Thank you very much. Right, and the rest of us, look how many we've got. This is crazy. Um, I want us to see if we can talk to any more. Right, you guys go on ahead. I'm going to get Green to try and talk to as many skeletons as possible, see if we can recruit more. Are you recruiting, Stroller? 7,500 cats. Sure. Whoa, there we go. Got another one. Lingyu. Excellent. Okay, got another recruit. And you have a bounty with Highlanders and Holy Nation and United Cities for some reason. Why? Oh, for God's sake. Fine. <laughs> Fine, go with the others to the scrap house. Right, that's everyone. So we should be able to go one floor up. Here we go, scrap house, and we can go up here. And this is where we should be able to do a mass amount of trading. I think their budget is 50k. So we should be able to make a lot of money here. And there's lots of people we can potentially talk to. Want something? Have we met? Can you work for me? 
I don't make a habit of talking to... But fine, whatever. Uh, well, let's go trade. <laughs> Hello, new customer. Welcome, dear Hugh. Oh, welcome, dear. Please excuse the mess. Anything shiny? Dak hordes? Simpleton, really, I'm sure his mind was fried when he got hit on the back of the... Ch oh, back some time ago. Old magazines, fragments, old wreckages, funny shaped rocks. We don't have anything much use here, but then, of course, one man's junk is another man's treasure. So how can I help you? Show me what you've got. Right, so this is the place if you want to buy some good weapons or the uh, blueprints for them, you come here. They've got everything. In vanilla, they have AI cores, but in this they do not because it makes it a little bit too easy to get them. But I think normally they sell like two AI cores here. But for now, they have a 50% markup for stuff. Oh, they've only got 25. I thought they had more than that. Uh, that's a shame. Let's sell that stuff. Oh, there's a 10% markup for ancient books. We do need ancient books, though. Oh, that's a big hit. Okay. Oh, equals cross. I would like to get some decent bows. Having a good sniper would be amazing. And does that leave us enough? Yeah, it does. Okay. Right. Sell the rest of that. And that gives us 75 back, which is plenty to go and buy the AI core research. I think that will do. Oh, hang on. Leon's being targeted. Who are you being targeted by? Black Desert Ninja. How far are you away from the base? You're really close to the base. You should be able to outrun them, surely. 21 mile an hour. 24. Okay, maybe not. Uh, you should be able to get there just before they catch up. Hopefully. I, I say that. And you are very quick. I'm not sure if we're going to make it. Oh, they've given up. Oh, that's all right then. Okay, right. Well, we we'll made it back. Uh, you guys get in. Have all of this lot. Uh, where's Cyberbeep? There we go. We need you then to make your way over here, please. That's six more recruits to uh, add to the list. But these ones, I think, would be really nice staying here. Uh, maybe with Mew. Or maybe they could replace Mew as uh, basically the stay behind squad. So maybe we'll keep Cyberbeat back as well for, to make it seven. And uh, the skeletons can kind of run the show here. Maybe crafting us goods and weapons and uh, making us some research books. So that we can then do the exploring and the uh, looting and recon that Ryoshi wants. I think that's probably a good plan. Yeah, I could go and buy that AI core guide. And I might do at some point. But I think... The cats would be useful to use for other things right now. And I think we need multiple broken AI cores to be able to make one. So I think we should probably focus on doing other stuff first before that. Ooh, beds. Beds might be quite good, actually, because they'll be better than sleeping bag. And then we could do robotics. We need, uh, what do we need? Electrical crafting. Oh, okay, we should focus on doing that then. Where's electrical crafting? Crafting, crafting, crafting. Robotics. We need steel refineries. Steel refineries. We need research bench level three. Ah, okay. Upgrade. Ten iron plates. Okay, that's really confusing. Why? Oh, Lingu has run ahead of everyone else. Uh, he's nearly there already at Agnok. The rest of them um, are on their way, but it's because I set them all to run together and uh, Lingu, I forgot to do that. So Lingu's just going to turn up before everyone else. They're going to be like, who the hell are you? <laughs> Which is really funny. I've got to look at your stats. Um... You're all right. And for 7,500, you're pretty pants. But, I mean, you've got the start of a not bad character in terms of uh, combat skills anyway. Saying that, though, I think you're probably going to end up being weaponsmith, armorsmith character, which I think is fine. Speaking of, is there a place to mine iron close by to here? Copper is there. Iron, there we go. Uh, it's not that far. It's a bit of a trek. Copper's much, much closer. But it's not impossible. So we could send someone to go and mine iron, bring it back to here, and then we can get someone to do, like, metalworking, something like that. So maybe we should start that. So let's have a look here. What have we got? Crafting. We have no way of making weapons or armor yet. So we should probably look at doing that maybe next. So crafting, crafting, crafting. Weaponsmith, here we go. So, basic weaponsmithing. There we go. We can get that done. We can just start doing that as well. The other bits. Clothing manufacturer, sure. Oh, look, Lingu. Lingu's turned up. Uh, Lingu, say hi to everyone. Everyone's going to be like, who the hell are you? And he's like, I'm Lingu. <laughs> I was told I could come here. And the rest are just coming over the horizon. So, that's good. They should all turn up fairly okay. I thought some of them might get injured. But it looks like we're uh, we're lucky today.
Oh, horses. Horses in danger. Who, who's attacking you? Oh, someone from the Sand Ninja. Worth 11,000 cat bounty? Eh? Okay, uh, saddle up, everyone. It looks like we're going in for a battle. Green's actually been hit. Right, you need to get back, and we are going to shoot this guy. Oh, God, horse. I distract him. There we go. Right, the rest of you get away. Oh, nice. That was a good hit. Go on, Green. I know you've only got a couple of shots left, but still. Make them count. Oh, nice. Left arm is... Oh, he's lost so much blood already. Oh, and here come the rest. Oh, God, Green. No. Right, here comes Beaky. Green just took him down. Green just soloed that guy. He's got some decent weapons. Take that. He has pretty pants everything else. 11,000 cats is actually pretty good. So, Ryoshi, do you want to pick him up? There we go. Right, they're healing him up so he's not going to die. And then I think Ryoshi just uh, basically go take this one to hang again. And, uh, yeah, you can just go get 11,000 cat bounty. That sounds amazing. The rest of you, come uh, meet your new friends. I think, who's the best out of all of you? I think it was Short Circuit, wasn't it? Yeah, Short Circuit's actually pretty good. The rest of you, especially Nutto, you got minuses in, like, everything. Uh, the rest of you have something to be desired. But the good news is that we have just the right place for you to, uh, yeah, get stuff done. So, Cyberbeep, you want to get back onto the bookmaking. That would be nice. Tech level four, we can instantly do, which is quite nice. So, I think let's just do that straight away. Crafting. Prototype harpoon turrets. That sounds pretty good. Mounted crossbow two. That sounds pretty good as well. Uh, intermediate weaponsmithing. That sounds pretty good as well. And we need more books to do anything else with weaponsmithing. That sounds pretty good. So that is the start of our crafting situation. Uh, we do need a lot more books, like a lot more books, like basic books. So I think Ryoshi can do that while he's over at Hang. Uh, I think it'd be quite good to try and see if we can buy this tower. I, I would quite like to. We've got 31,000 cats. Maybe we should just buy it outright. I mean, we've got 18 building material. Buy all them. Let's buy it. Sure. And then we can basically own this whole place, which is just amazing. So, Isaiah, you want to repair that. We'll see how many uh, building materials it's going to take to repair this. Uh, another 32. Uh, well, we've got, like, half that. So you can carry on doing that. Uh, is there any other building materials in here? We've got like one. Oh, you haven't even put any down. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we need like another 17. That's doable. I think when that updates one more time, we should have enough then to fix this tower. And then we'll have a really nice defense that we can then use to uh, attack enemies that come too close. Maybe we'll have that as the crafting place and this one as the actual like respite tech place and storage. Either way, I think this kind of makes the town a bit more complete. This kind of makes it so that we more or less own this place. Best of both worlds, we get the protection of the tech hunters, but we get two big buildings that we can call our own. So I think that's really, really good. Right, and once again, Ryoshi is at Heng. So let's go trade this sand ninja in for 11,000 cat bounty. Take him 200 cat bonus. Nice. I don't know why we keep getting bonuses, but I am happy with it. So let's go to the bar, and we should hopefully be able to invest the money that we've just got into more trade goods. So I think anything under 100% markup, we should just buy. We can sell these for a bunch of money just across the way at the Black Desert City for a 50% markup. This is great. Is that enough for anything else? 900. Uh, no. But to be fair, that's a lot of money already. I mean, that's going to be like what? Collectively, I think about 80,000 cats something stupid again they can only afford about seventy-five thousand cats worth of goods every time but we can always go back there again sell all of most of this and then we can probably sell the rest to that guy who we sell the by the ai core guide from and uh, yeah we should be able to basically sell all of this to him it just seems nuts that this small thing of 21 canisters of alcohol is more than ryoshi's family's debt it just seems crazy ryoshi's just got back which is nice and they're just finishing making that up i've realized that our guys are still working in the dark and we should have some lights electronic lamps there we go uh, so let's just get a couple of these in the building there we go the first light is done <laughs> the difference that's made we can actually see our characters Oh, amazing. 
and let there be light. There we go. And that's lit up most of the base anyway, so that's not bad. So Mew can now work at 58% rather than having to work at half that because it's dark. So that's not bad. So we should be able to get through some of the research a little bit quicker, which is always good because we were struggling a little bit. Also, I need to drop off these two books so we can do some more research. Research, research, research. Um, imprisonment. Ah, that would have been good to have. Prisoner cage, prison pole. Basic weapon grades. New weapon grade, rusting blade. Maybe we should go for that one then. Sure. Okay, we might need to get some more power for this base then. Electric, that's probably it. Uh, here we go. So, light wind generator, that's what we need. We need four books. And then we can make smaller lighter generators that go on roofs. So, Ryoshi, do you want to just quickly nip in here, see if they've got four books? Uh, they do not. They've got two. Half-eaten books. <laughs> uh, no, that's no good. Oh, okay. Um... Fine. Well, I think maybe off camera I'm going to need to go book hunting, see if we can get as many books as possible, because we need lots. Like a good probably hundred or so books to be able to do everything we want to do. I think that's probably a good enough place to call it. We've got a few bits we can sell, we've got a few bits that we can do. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've liked what's in, please leave a like and subscribe. And massive thank you to all my Patreons. Drew, Clint, David, Len, Valise, Lorby Lord, T Chaos, Toolman, Nacho Cheese, Mikey Soundtrack, King of Thorns, Skylar Burschel, Charles, Mint Salad, Lats, and Brian. Cheers, guys. I just can't thank you guys enough. You guys are all amazing. Thank you so much for your support. So, yeah, I will see you guys next episode. Cheers. Bye-bye.